Good morning, and welcome to St. John's Online Worship. My name is Pastor Jake Alstead, and this is a place where grace abounds. Dear friends, it is the fourth Sunday in Advent, which means Christmas is right around the corner. I know that our Christmas celebrations this year will be different. Uh, they won't be maybe what we want, but we will still hear the good news of great joy that is for all people. A Savior has been born for you. Jesus has been born for you to save you from your sins. I don't know about you, but um, feeling a little weary. And God has good news for weary, tired out people. That is our epistle text today, that God strengthens us as we wait for Jesus to come, not only for, for Christmas, but also in his second coming, the coming on the last day when he will make all things new. Friends, just to recap what our Christmas celebrations are this week, we have our special blue Christmas service. That's tomorrow, Monday, December 21st, the longest night of the year at 7 o'clock. Blue Christmas is a special service for anyone who is having a difficult time during the Christmas season for any reason. There is hope and there is comfort. There's a light to be found in the darkness. That service, again, tomorrow, Monday, December 21st at 7 o'clock. It'll be online. There's a special link for that. I'll get that out. And in person. Christmas Eve, we've got our 5 and 7.30 services. Those are going to be in the parking lot. A special lessons and carols service. If anything changes with that, I'll let you know, either due to weather or by some chance restrictions or something like that, but 5 and 7.30 in the parking lot on Christmas Eve, lessons and carols. Um, you're going to need probably a flashlight, and you're probably going to need a chair to sit as well. Christmas Day will be uh, online. Oh, forgot to mention Christmas Eve will be online as well. Uh, but Christmas Day is online and in person inside the building. That's at 10.15, our normal Sunday morning time. This is Friday. Christmas Day, and um, we have to RSVP for all of these services. So if you haven't RSVP'd yet, uh, we definitely need to know uh, which service you're going to be at. My friends, uh, may God bless our time today. One more announcement, I just remembered. Next weekend, next weekend, next Sunday, we're going to be online only, okay? Next Sunday, online only. We'll kick back to our, our schedule um, when we come back from that weekend, okay? So, may God bless our time today as we hear the good news, and may God strengthen us as we wait. Let's begin with our opening hymn. <laughs>
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That our eyes and our ears may be open to receive the mystery of God's love. Let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God, confessing our sin and need of forgiveness and life. At the Lord's own invitation and command, I confess all my sins to God. The very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended him and hurt my neighbor. I come now in the sincere hope and faith of the forgiveness of God, made known to the whole world in the mystery of his Son, Jesus Christ, who has sacrificed his own flesh and blood for me. Remove my sin and guilt for his sake, and restore a right spirit within me. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. 
And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 5. Let's read these verses together. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore, through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
my dear friends in Christ, if you can believe it, we are less than two weeks away from the end of the year. And what a year it's been. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that we're all weary. We're all worn out. We're tired of dealing with this pandemic. We're tired of uh, hearing about it even. We're worn out from all of the precautions and the restrictions. Those who have been on the front line, they're tired. And there are other things that make us weary too. I mean, it's not just the pandemic. Some are related to that, but, but not everything is. I mean, it's been quite a year of political discourse. Overwhelming racial injustices have been brought to light. Many are hurting financially. It's another year of a body that isn't getting any younger. Perhaps you're weighed down by guilt or by, by some fear that, that has taken root in your very soul. If any of these things describe you, or maybe there's another reason why you're, you're weary, uh, I'm right there with you. We've got any number of ways to deal with our weariness, to become unweary or refreshed. Perhaps maybe for you it's a, a vacation, you know, or getting away from the familiar for a while. But travel this year has been limited. Uh, maybe you haven't had the chance or, or the resources to get away. Vacations can help for a while, but sometimes you need a vacation from your vacation, as we know. We'll turn to other solutions like mindfulness techniques or getting into a favorite book or a favorite TV show, maybe going for a massage, uh, getting some alone time, spending time with people you love, um, working out, or maybe even enjoying a Lutheran beverage or two. And these things are good things, no doubt. But God's got something else for us. In our epistle text today, uh, Paul's final words from his letter to the Romans, uh, he writes this, Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now that is one very long sentence, but I want to take you back to the beginning. Now to him, that is God, who is able to... To do what? To strengthen you. Good news for all the weary people out there, including myself. Our God is the same God who still says to us, Come to me, all you weary people. I will give you rest. God can strengthen us. And Paul tells us how he does it, through the gospel, through the preaching of Jesus Christ. And as I hear those words from Paul, I'm reminded of another verse, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. We are those Waiting ones, those ones who wait. Not only are we in the season of Advent, soon to be Christmas, waiting for Christmas, but we're continually waiting with the saints in heaven for Christ's return. His coming on the last day to make all things new. O come, O come, Emmanuel is not our obligatory Advent anthem. It's our daily prayer. We want Jesus to come. To hurry up and come back, make things right, to put an end to our weariness once and for all. To give us true and everlasting rest from our labors, from our sin, from our toils, from our stress, from our guilt, from our shame, from death. But he hasn't come back yet. And so we wait. 
but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. To say it using the words of Romans 16, but you who wait for the Lord will have your strength renewed by God through the gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I could use some of that renewed strength this morning. The good news of Jesus Christ, Paul writes, has been made known to all nations. Just like the angels proclaimed on Christmas morning, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I'll tell you what, the most important word in that declaration is you. Because this good news is for you. The good news of great joy, the gospel of Jesus, is meant to be told. It's meant to be proclaimed because it is for all people. That means it's for you. Yes, you, you weary, exhausted, burdened soul. No one is left out. No one is excluded. When Paul says that the gospel has been made known to all nations for the purpose of faith, see, he's finishing his letter where he began. From Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. The gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. As we wait in our weariness, God strengthens us by faith in the gospel, the message that is the power of God. And what is that message? Well, as Paul says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. This is not the revelation that God is righteous and so you better act righteously. Goodness, if that were the gospel, we would be even more weary. No, this is the best news ever. A a gate to paradise, as Luther called it. The gospel is the message that God gives you, free of charge, no strings attached, his righteousness. From faith for faith. That's gift Language. His righteousness is given, received by faith. And even the faith that believes, that receives it, is a gift from God. That little baby boy born in Bethlehem, whose birth we will celebrate very soon, is the fullness of God in human flesh and blood. He is that righteous God, the only one who is righteous. And he came to live a perfectly righteous life in your place and exchange his righteousness for your unrighteousness. Dying on the cross as the totality of the world's sin. No sin then, no sinner is excluded. The good news, friends, is that Jesus came to forgive your sins. So hear it again. Your sins are forgiven. You are forgiven are righteous. Right now, as you stand before God, you are righteous. You are absolved of any wrongdoing, any failures, any missed opportunities, any careless word or action. You are covered in Christ's perfect righteousness, and your life will be redeemed. For God will draw you to himself And on the last day, take your body, your mind, your soul, your emotions, your personality, your joys, everything. He will take you and make you new. He will redeem it all. Every part of you. This is all yours. The good news is for you. God has done it all through his son Jesus for you. You are the recipient of God's righteousness In and through Jesus Christ, we live by faith, Paul says. That is, when we are weary and burdened, fatigued and just plain worn out, God comes to us with his promises and declares them to us again and again and again. This is how he strengthens us. He gives us his word. 
The word, like the word of the angel that proclaims that Jesus is born for you. That he died, that he rose for you. That he's coming back for you. He sends preachers to declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Your death is defeated. Your life is redeemed. You are God's beloved baptized, treasured child. It's through this gospel, that good news that God has made you righteous through his son, free of charge, that God strengthens us. It is water for a thirsty traveler, bread for a tired, hungry soul. It's resurrection for the dead. You'll hear the familiar words again this Christmas. The good news of great joy that is for all people, that unto you a Savior is born. May God bless our celebrations of Christ's coming at Christmas. And may he renew our strength as we wait for him to come again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation and birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve through the continued witness of the holy prophets, apostles, and evangelists, and finally, through your living voice, through the ministers of your church to this day. Grant that your living word ever call us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep all you have called to preach and teach and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one and give them health and joy in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit over the whole world that those who lead in the authority of government acknowledge your laws and will, making for times of peace that we may live faithfully in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your holy word and sacrament, strengthen us to obedient living. Send your grace, mercy, peace, and love to surround our families. Inspire those of various vocations in the world. Comfort, defend, and heal all those in times of illness or distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By the mystery of our Lord's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, establish us in the one true faith and strengthen us in lives obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, know that you are at peace with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He has taken care of everything, free of charge. It's all yours by faith in Jesus. Friends, at this time we would be taking our offering right now. There are two good ways to do that. The first is to go to our website, stjohns-wp.org, stjohns-wp.org. Click on the Give tab, and there you'll see an option for online giving. Another way is to send your check to the building. We are St. John's Lutheran Church, 47 Winthrop Street, Williston Park, New York, 11596. And let me thank you for your continued offerings in support of the Word and Sacrament Ministry of St. John's, both to this congregation and to surrounding communities. If you have any prayer requests, I'll send you back to our website, stjohns-wp.org. And if you'll click on the Resources tab, the second option there is Prayer Request. And you'll see that there's a form to fill out. You can fill that out, and below there's a public prayer chain. You can let us know how we can be praying for you. Thank you. And with that, dear friends, we place our hands out in front of us like a cup to remind us that everything we have is a gift from God. We come to him with nothing to give, nothing to offer, and everything to receive. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs> Amen. We continue with our closing hymn.